Well, Sarah's here at the moment. Hello, Sarah. Hello. And uh, she asked me while she was here because she likes, she likes to share hobbies and things and interests and she had a bit of painting with me. We've done some pyrography and all sorts of different things. And she said, can you teach me a little bit about carving, Pete? So I thought, well, rather than just do it with uh, share, share that with her only, I mean, we know we've got films of mine on here on, from walking sticks to carving fish to all sorts. But just a few of the basics for Sarah today might interest some of you guys. Just the starter tips, really. Behind me, so I've bought a second-hand bandsaw recently, and I've got a lathe. On the right here, I've got my mount cutter. Very basic workshop here. Um, some people would be horrified. I know many craftsmen who prefer to have things like a kitchen. Absolutely immaculate. I already just got set up in here this year in France, so this is the second workshop, and it's big enough for me just to do what I want and to create. And I hope to be carving more here for you later with far more creativity. I want to do some uh, a lot of... Uh, decoy ducks and uh, carvings. I'm going to do a huge um, owl, I hope, sort of that big with the chainsaw later on. So we've got things lined up for you for fun in the future. But before you start off, let me just show you a few of the tips and tools of the trade um, that may help you just to pick up what you want from car boot sales and so on, or your local hardware store, that will get you started, eh? I bought these old kitchen units out from the garage when I came here and made a small workshop out of them. Uh, because I just needed work surfaces and I've got something here for sharpening up the teeth on the chainsaw. I've got my basic tools set up just on screws and nails where I can hang and see them there. Um, a cross cut chop saw, lathe over here and a cupboard under here where I keep my basic electric hound tools. Let's start with some of these and just give you an idea of what we might need for carving. So I guess we're starting in the reverse here a bit because we're looking at the finishing of the product rather than the, the start of it. But at the finish of the product we need to sand it off and we can sand first of all by getting the roughest areas away with files and rasps, I'm going to show you those in a minute. But at the very finish we can do larger areas with an electric sander other than hand or sandpaper over a block of wood. We can use these smaller palm sanders which have a smaller area and you can get into corners better with them. But my favourite one of all are these little belt sanders, I think they're amazing tools. And they're not expensive to buy, this one takes up the dust as well, so I'll check it out in a minute. But they've got a little belt on here that turns around and around, and they're wonderful for shaping, because they'll very rapidly take away the wood, and you haven't got to carve everything off. You can round off with these, you can carve into the scales on fish, you can carve into the feathers on wings. Um, when I say carve, I mean, you know, we're going to use a tool just to remove wood. And if I can spend 10 to 15 minutes with a chainsaw getting rid of all my rough wood rather than two or three weeks with a penknife, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you see my point. Um, you may as well, especially when you've got arthritis like me and problems to sort of keep things going and energy, um, may as well use power tools for the job. And there are many other tools. You can get little um, chainsaw attachments to go on the end of drills and all sorts of things. Um, on it, or on angle grinders, for instance, there's ones, there's ones that will go on angle grinders that have a little chainsaw attachment you can really whip away the wood with, but I find that this and the hand tools I'm going to show you are usually enough for me and if I'm doing larger work than a chainsaw to rip it down. Now, as I say, space is at a premium for me. I used to have all my carving tools laid out on shelves where I could see them more easily. At the moment, as I don't do much carving, everything's in this one drawer. Let's start off with how we're going to hit the carving tool, the chisels, the gouges and so on. Now, you can use an ordinary old woodworking mallet like this, but we don't tend to do that because there is a specialised mallet called a wood carving mallet that's far more adaptable. And here's a couple of them. This one's made out of lignum vitae and is a special one. That's this one here, which is much heavier. And this is a nice light one. So if you just feel those, Sarah, keep them in front of that drawer if you would, yeah, that's it. So you feel that one's much heavier than the other. And if you're doing a lot of work, Okay, if you want to really hammer something in, then the heavier one is better, but for light tapping. And what happens is, as you hit the chisel end, the handle, you've got any part... You'd think it would be harder to hit with a rounded edge, but it's not. It's easier, actually, because you can hit at any angle you like. And it's quite versatile. So that's your mallets. What else have I got in here? I come down to shaping wood. Various surforms forms, very useful, from semi-curved ones here to round ones, to flat ones. They're very good for removing, and they're quite cheap, for removing um, that's nice large areas of wood or rounding things up. So, surforms are very useful. We've got ordinary files, both wood and larger metal files if we need them. But the surforms are the most useful there. So I've got various amounts of sandpaper there ready to go. And much smaller tools as well for shaping. 
Now these little, what they're called rhythms, are very useful. You see here, it's got a curved end, you get them in various shapes and sizes and various um, textures. You can come close if you want. You can see that, I mean there, there are more in there, mm. but you can buy these little tools, these little files, yeah. to get in and around shapes and into the edges mm. of feathers or faces or mm. whatever. So very, very useful little called rifflers, these little files uh, in metal. Um, you can see I've got you can see I've got various shapes and ones of those in there, different um, thicknesses and uh, and roughness. Now we come down to one of the most important things, and this is our actual carving chisels, our carving tools. And here you'll see there's loads of different forms and shapes. Some of these you can actually make yourself from. Uh, old chisels. I mean, for instance, if I take this one, that's been made from an old chisel, and all I've done is sharpen up the shape that I want mm. for paring into edges. Mm. But good chisels are not cheap. You can get cheaper sets, and they will do, and you can mm. get small, almost children's sets. But getting good ones to start with, and these are gone a bit rusty because they've been left mm. in here a while, they want wire walling off and sharpening up and oiling up now, um, which I will do before I use them properly. But the thing is with chisels, the gouges, they must be sharp. You really want them as sharp as possible and you get proper um, slipstones for putting oil on that you can sharpen them up with. You need to buy those before you, when you buy the kit, because when the kit comes, they won't be, normally they won't be sharpened and you've got to you know, grind them a little and sharpen them up. So this is a spoon gouge and you can see it goes down and upwards to getting inside bowls and inside shapes. And it's a gouge because it's rounded. You can see by the end of that one, it's rounded. Oh my, I do need to tidy these up, but they've been here for years and I will be using them probably in this next year. That's the gouge as well, and the gouges come in various flatnesses or shapes. They come almost flat or they come very round, and you get roughing up gouges as well, which are much, much heavier. For instance, this one here is a great big old roughing up gouge. It's useful for a roughing up gouge or heavier gouges if you've got a metal ferrule at the end, because you see what's happened here. The wood has actually split off the end of the handle, and if you've got a metal ferrule there, that doesn't happen so much. Mind you, metal ferrules aren't so good for your mallet either. So that's a big heavy gouge for roughing up, for getting rid of the, the, the waste timber. If I come down now to my smaller ones, and I'll show you these in particular. You see this one has a V end. See that all right there? Put it against my hand. It's got a V end, and this is the one for carving out letters or fine um, gouge marks or fine details, even even little eyes or squares. And we've got a smaller one of it there, a very, very small one. And we've also got rounded ones, very, very small rounded gouges for doing dots and dashes. And I'm going to show you just the basics with only that lettering one today and one gouge. Which gouge we use? We'll use a medium gouge here just to show you the basics of how to work with wood and these um, these little tools. So we've got we've got a rounded gouge there, we've got our ordinary larger gouge and I want that letter V here, this one. So let's have a look at what we can do with those and just discuss wood now and what we do with wood and what sort of woods we can use. When I talked about chainsaws for my own use, I prefer to use an electric chainsaw because they're so much easier. Um, all of course you need is a power source nearby. But you haven't got all that messing about with mixing up fuel, running out of fuel and so on. As long as your chains are kept sharp and the machine is kept well. This is a Makita, and I love these Makita chainsaws. Very, very good machines. Um, and not a huge blade. I don't need it for carving. Or well, not a huge chain, I should say. Okay, let's just talk a little bit about wood. Sarah was asking me earlier if she could use some wood that had been cut by her, uh, by cut by her, that had been cut for her um, by her friend, and it's straight from the forest, it's still green. If we use green wood, it's going to crack and split and fall apart. It needs to be seasoned for at least a year, if not more. Now, if you can cut wood from older trees that have fallen years ago, it's already seasoned naturally. So if you can have that cut or you use those lumps of wood that have already seasoned naturally, that's perfect, and you haven't got to do anything with them. If you're going to have planks or use wood that's been cut recently, you've got to store it aside in a 
not really dry place. It's not good to store it in a house of central heating. That ruins furniture anyway because it dries it right out. Central heating is one of the worst things for antique furniture and wood and so on. Dries it right out. So your outside shed, not wet, not damp, just good humidity, just natural humidity to dry out slowly. The lathe workers, you can now buy chemicals you can put into a bucket with water, put your wood in there for a week or two, and it will soak into the pores and almost give a plastic uh, filling to the wood. So if you've got a special piece of wood that you want to use more urgently, you can buy special chemicals for that. But when I tried those out, I found that one in five or six still would split, even so. But it was, it was useful stuff, but you don't do that for wood carving normally. We need seasoned wood. You can use older wood, but it's going to split, it's going to fall apart slightly. Different woods have different hardnesses. Pine is very brittle, it's quite soft, it doesn't cut that easily. In the fact, it doesn't cut that smoothly, but it's beautiful. And I've made some lovely fish out of pine with all the um, figuring in it. Figuring is the grain and the shape in the wood. And um, oak, for instance, is very hard and quite brittle. And uh, lime is beautiful to carve, apple's nice to carve, cherry is nice to carve. Um, I'll show you a couple of my bits of carving. Uh, in, at the beginning of this, uh, shortly in this film, but let's just look at the dangers of, of the wood carving. You don't need normally to wear goggles and gloves with carving because you're going to be carving away from yourself, you're not going to carve towards your hand and so on, and how we're going to hold a piece of wood onto the bench. But if we just look at bits of wood, I mean, here's some old bits of pine for a start, and I'm just going to show you something with these because you can see the figuring on these so easily. You can see the figuring on the grain here, the way that that grain curls like water, under, like the current of water un, un, underneath the surface here. And the way that this curves, it's beautiful when it's finished. I mean, this would make a lovely fish because it would swirl on the side of the fish. And even on the side, you can see the grain is going swirling in different directions and it comes up here. <coughs> now, this is very important to know because if the grain comes up there towards you and you cut that way into it, it's going to split down into there and split the wood apart. So you need to always cut or gouge with the grain. So we would gouge this way so that the gouge comes up and away and it would give a smooth cut. If I gouge that way, it will gouge into it and it will split it and you won't have control. So we have to cut with the grain of the wood, with the flow of the wood. We never cut against the grain. That would be too risky. I've got a knot here that could be used in our design, but knots tend to fall apart and come out, so we try to avoid knots where possible unless they're going to be an integral part of the design. If we're looking at this here then, where does the grain go? Well, it goes that way. So we would carve with the grain that way. We can't carve that way because it will split the grain. So this is something to remember right from the start as to the directions you're going to carve. You might get away with it if you're carving like that, but you won't get away with it if you're carving like that. So carving with the grain is useful. That's the same with planing wood. If we see here, you only just see the grain in this, being oak. This is oak now. That was pine we just looked at. But the grain here is going slightly up that way. So if I was planing this wood, I'd need to plane that way rather than against the grain that way because that would, um, the, the cutters of the plane or the blades of the plane would catch the wood and rip it away. So even when planing, um, we need to be aware of it doesn't matter so much when you're using a surform or a rasp you can do it almost in any direction then it's still better to go away from the grain rather than against it but it does matter if you're carving so let's take a look at that on this little bit of wood here and you can see what's actually happened here you can see that this piece of wood has actually split along the grain there's the grain coming along here and it comes up and then there's been a knot or a twist here and it twists up this way and the wood has actually broken away along the grain. It's come up there. So if I were cutting that way, I would split that off. But if I cut this way, it would go smoothly. So you have to work that one out. Let's just take a look at how we can cut into the surface of wood. Now, how do I hold my wood? Well, I've just, Sarah's just stopped me a moment whilst we're filming, which is excellent, because now she can ask the questions that you'll probably be asking me. I needed to look a little closer so I could see exactly what you meant by grain. I'm it's more easy sure to see on this one. You can see the grain very clearly on here, look. You see how that grain goes downward there? Well, it's, how do you know it's not going that way? Because you can it, feel it. it either way, you, you, you watch the yeah. pattern of it. The yeah. pattern goes down there. The pattern yeah. comes up here. Yeah? Oh, OK. Yeah? Yeah. You, can't, you can feel it, but not too much feel as look. Yeah. You see the grain there is dead straight look. Yeah. And here, it suddenly comes that direction. So this piece, you see it would catch. If I put my finger now, look, yeah, it catches yeah, there. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how I could tell the difference between... It's when it's straight, it's more difficult. Yeah. When it's straight, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 
it's when it curves away. So all of this you would not cut that way yeah. because the grain is going that way. But you can cut that way. Yeah. And here we're flat. So look at this one. Here you can't see the grain as much, but you see the grain is going like that there. So if we cut here, it would be risky to cut that way, wouldn't it? But yeah. you can cut that way because you're going downward through it. Here it would be risky to cut that way because you'd split this off. But you can go that way because you're going through it. I think so. Yep. I'm not completely sure that oh, the fact, you know, to me, you could go up that way or you could go up that way. It's like... No, but if you cut there, that's going to split that off. Yeah. But if you cut that way, it splits it off that way, but you've got control. Yeah. If here, you're going downward into the wood. Yeah. If we put the chisel here, it's going to be drawn. The chisel's going to be sucked in like the current mm. into there. Mm. If we go there, it's going against that current yeah. and it will slice through the piece. Here it goes along the wood and you don't want that. Mm. Here it goes through the wood, you do want that. Mm. Does that make more sense? I think so. I yeah. think it's a case of... Well, as we go along, we'll get it. In fact, that's what we'll do right now. I'm going to deliberately take a chisel. And what we're going to go on to next was how the wood is held in here. This is an ordinary carpenter's vice. It's quite good for holding wood. We can also hold the wood on with a jig clamp. Or you can get special, if you've got the money, uh, you can get special carving uh, clamps which go through the wood underneath and clamp on through here. And you can screw it in the bottom of your carvings. Very useful. But I just want to demonstrate this business of the grain to Sarah. Pardon you, Sarah. All right, there we go. Now the grain here is going that direction. So the grain here, we can see, is going down that way. So if I take my gouge and a little round mallet, we have quite a light one for this. If I start but in fact I won't, I'll use, I'll use a flat chisel just to demonstrate this first of all. Just an ordinary carpenter's flat chisel. If I cut here like this, it will start to guide me down there. You see that's split off down that way. The grain is going that way. And that's trying to follow the grain down. If I go this way, it's not doing it that well actually. Um, if I go this way, and you see how rough that is, it's yeah. just split it off. If I go this way with the grain, yeah. I get a lovely smooth, it's not, it's not chipping off look, yeah. it's a beautiful smooth cut. So I'm going, I'm going with the grain, I'm not going across it. Let's take a piece off here, straight away. It doesn't split off look. I can carve right through it, beautiful nice smooth carving, mm. whereas if I go the other way, almost straight away I'm going to split like that mm. and it just rough and it just goes along the grain and splits off. It's a bit twisted this grain so it's not showing it too well but it's giving you an idea. If I take my gouge now and I come from here, you still have my hand at the top here, thumb underneath, plenty of space there, I can use my angles any way they want. Now the, the more I raise my hand the deeper the cut goes and the less and don't use huge, great, just little taps like this. Mm. And look how that gently goes into there. And I can go deeper and deeper by raising my hand. Deeper and deeper. To make that gouge into there. To shape it off. Nice smooth cut. If I were doing that this way, I'd immediately split a piece off and it's all rough. Yeah. Because I've gone with the grain. So you saw what I meant by that? Yeah. yeah. That was a pretty good little demonstration, that bit. Right, let's come in closer. And we'll, now I'm going to clamp down a piece of wood. Before I do that, let's look at shaping, because we talked about tools and shaping. Now, now surf forms are very useful. This one not tightening up. We can round off shapes. That's not a rounded one. Use a, a rounded uh, surf form. But look at the way that I get very quickly. It doesn't matter what tools we use. It's simply a matter of what tool suits the job. But look at that. Yeah across the grain, not so much with it, more across the grain, because it cuts better going across the grain. So surf forms are better going across the grain. That's for rounding things up. You've got all these various surf forms for that. But the tool I wanted to show you most, that's so quick to use, is the electric one, which I've now lost. We've got this little belt sander now. We have a little belt sander now that I was talking about earlier. Just press the trigger and there we go. And this belt will round off and shape this so it can actually cut into it. It's there, that cuts in. Yeah, that's quite useful. Yeah, so the minimum the minimum of fuss and look at that quickly rounded out off shape there and I'm cutting right into the wood. And if I was doing um, if I was doing fins on fish or I was doing um, 
scales then it will be very useful. Let me show you here on this for instance. Can you see how I've made those scale shapes there? We'll just zoom in on that so you can see more closely. I've managed to get these little scale shapes here. So that cut right across. Round things up. So it's quite a versatile tool and you can actually carve with it, you can actually mm -hmm. shape up with it. So I think they're tremendous little, little, little tools. Right, that's carving in the round. Um, now, we were talking about using gouges and so on, the way to use them. We've just been using a gouge to carve this away by going with the grain, carve it around, so on. Carve that right away there. You can see the way that's come off with the grain even there, because that grain in this particular piece is going downward. That's why it split off. If it had been more, it wouldn't have done that. Now I'm going down with it more, it won't. And we can just round the whole thing off by shaping, by taking little bits off at a time, and you get a, a lovely feeling of form just by leaving the gouge marks. Sometimes people don't want to smooth off their forms. They leave that in the bottom of a bowl and just sand that rather than smoothing it right out. And we would use gouges that get flatter and flatter to gradually flattening things out there and then sand it out. So we can shape around this bit by bit by just nibbling away parts of it and feeling the form, finding the form within the block of wood. It's great fun, but you've got to go with the flow of the wood. You've got to keep working that out. You notice I'm always working away from myself. I never cut towards myself unless I have to. It's always away. Your G clamp on, you've got to make sure it's, it's where it's not going to be in the way. So you might prefer it to be even upside down like this. And don't have it in the way of your carving, you've got to move things around. If you want to put a bit of waste wood here in between the G clamp and the wood, just stop it making a mark in the wood. Right, that's firm enough now. I'm going to talk about lettering now. Uh, the patterns we can make with the actual tools we've got. And what I'm going to do is a simple flower first of all here. So we'll do a like a Yorkshire rose just to give you an idea of what these different tools will do for carving as well as lettering. So then we put our Yorkshire rose and in the middle of that rose I'm going to have a crisscross pattern there like that and this will just come outwards into petals like this. There we are, little Yorkshire rose. And then we're going to put the word Sarah here just put the, the first three letters there. This is just to show you how you can use these different tools <coughs> to do low relief and to also do lettering. Okay, first of all, before we even start this, let's just see what these various tools will do. We've already seen what a gouge will do. Now, the grain is running this way, so it's going away from me that way. So if I take a gouge here and want to take some out of it, if I go in there, I can control it by it going upwards gradually. We've got a bevel on the gouge. So as I come up, it gradually cuts that out smoothly and you can see a lovely smooth cut I've got there. If I try it that way, the chances are it'll split more. And you see that now is splitting away, look. It's not quite so smooth. It's a fairly even grain, but I'm, I'm being pulled along here, it won't come up. But if I go this way, so I can go that way, that way, and in this way. If it's, a, if it's a straight grain, then what we would do is we'd go in one way like this, to halfway, then we would go back the other way, this is to make a bowl, and we'd cut out that way until we meet it. And that way we can make a bowl. Cut one way, and then cut the other way. And even going across slightly if you want, but that way you can get a bowl. We can then go in there with our, our rifflers later, and I showed you those rifflers. For instance, these shapes tools, and we can get in there to smooth them out with the little curved rifflers later. So now it's all starting to make sense. Yeah. Haven't got those, and you can use a bit of sandpaper with your fingers, and you can get in there with those. So we can get in with the with the tools and smooth them out. You've got those gouges, and you can see why now. If we had a really difficult um, 
shape to get into here and it was very very deep then this is where the spoon comes in because we can really get in there with the spoon right underneath look we go right down and in there that's where the spoon gouge comes in okay there's some basics of using a gouge now let's look at making lines I'm going to take my V gouge the larger one I've got several sizes now we've got grain here we've got to be careful about this almost certainly we're going to be cutting across the grain at some stage but try and choose the angle so we might not carve this all in one go we might go one way and then we might go another way according to the grain let's start here and we start with our chisel fairly high up like that tap in a couple of times and then bring it down a bit and you have to gauge the amount of wood you can see inside the V so I'm going to cut round here now starting to go towards the grain there a bit it might start to split so I'm going to come the other way from here I'm going to cross the grain watch the amount that you're taking out you know bring it up or down but if there's too much coming through and then I'm going to go into my cut again here and join in and look at that there we go look we just got to get that little bit finished here now I can go deeper and deeper I've got to come to go with the grain now I've got to come around this way so I'm actually going to carve towards myself this time I'm going to be safe it's well away from me right round and you see how it's splitting away there with the grain so I've got to be careful I'm going to twirl around and lift the handle the blade up push the handle down to finish off that cut to get a very fine finish to that letter now let's do a bit more let's come right in on that letter so, so you we see want it. to go deeper now we've got our fine cut here I want to come in a bit deeper to come around. So if I go this way, I'm going to be going against the grain. So this one, I really do need to cut this with the grain. That's flowing that way. I'm going to come in there, a little bit deeper. Then I'm going to come around across the grain here, and with the grain again. And I'm going to go deeper still, quite deeply. Now I'm going against the grain there again. So I've got to come this way and go deeper still into there. And then just finish off here and you can see how I get a lovely letter and it isn't splitting away because I'm watching the grain every time so if I'm going here I'm going against the grain look I'm pushing against the grain here I'm going with the grain that's safe here I'm going with the grain that would be against the grain because I'm going against the grain there do you start to understand it now you can see it more now okay so that's the V gouge you can practice those in a minute and we can go deeper and deeper so I can come down here with the grain this time and I can go deeper but I can also angle the blade to go broader that way I can even come in with a flat chisel and take this out with a flat to go great big lettering if, if I want to make a dot I can use the same gouge and just make a square one or a diamond one by going one way and then the other way or I can take a little round gouge like this one I could even use it by hand and just twist it in and go all the way around or I can hammer it round and I can make a dot like that look so that's a little rounded one god these are getting rusty they want sorting out right now I'm going to now use that V gouge to map out my low relief carving of this flower not a very big flower I should have made it bigger really so we're going to go to this flower now and I'm going to use my V gouge to map it out and I'm going to carve this bit and this bit here and you can finish off that and that so start with the V gouge to get my depth of cut so I'm going to just make this one this one this one and this one I'm going to start with the middle and my grain goes that way that way that way and that way so I've got four cuts to make so I've got this way quite deep all the way around and I've got to come back the other way and meet it then I've got to go this way I've got to come towards myself here now that's it with the grain now I've got to go the other way with the grain it's different angle you can turn the wood if you need to if you find this too difficult to do these, these various angles we'll turn turn the wood around Doesn't get a perfect circle there but that'll do for what I want right and immediately we've got that's about the depth I want to go and we cut right down into there I want to cut quite deep and I'm going to do these the same out here quite deep we'll see why in a minute 
all the way around this pattern we've got. Now you can see all our pattern is worked out there, isn't it? So what I'm going to do now is start the relief. I'm going to take a gouge and with the grain, not against it, cut down to there. So that way I go that way. So I'm going to cut down just to where I've got those depths of just carefully there. Little cuts all the way down to the edge. And now my flower is in relief, it's standing out. Now, yet again, I'm going to take my V gouge and go back in and around this because I've now leveled off to it. I want to bring it out even more. So I'm going to go around with the V gouge again, right into these. And if I want to, I can go down with the gouges again to those to smooth it down to them. I haven't got time today, but it's just to give you an idea. So there we are, that's, that's brought them out again. Right. I now want to get relief to these, so I'm going to take my little gouge and I'm going to cut this petal, I'm going to leave it high this end and go low that end. Okay. Like that, just down to that middle. And now our stamens are showing up. So here the same, just cut it down to the edge here. Use the edge of the chisel there, might have to use a smaller gouge or even a flat chisel. Now this is where that handmade one comes in. This is a beauty for this because the homemade chisel I made with the straight edge, absolutely ideal now for just paring in here. Look, I can just get in there with that. Just pare down to that edge, look. So sometimes we make tools, especially for ourselves, for special just down into there. There we go. And again, just down to that edge. And now you can see my petal standing out. Look, it's pretty, isn't it? Yes, Pete. <laughs> right, so into here again. Just train. Right, now this middle of the petal, I could have left myself a bit more of the round, but now I could either come across that by gouging across like this to make the marks, just making marks like that look, or I could use a much finer V gouge, which I've got, to just carefully the very edge, just carefully crisscross this. Don't do too, if I do too much, it will rip it out. So just, just a mark across there with the very edge of the blade of the V gouge. And the same the other way. Too much and you'll start lifting out squares of it. But we're just texturing that. And there we are. Now, let me just get in there and just a bit more finishing. Now we come back to our riffling tool. And I would come into here and I'd start riffling away the stuff here and getting into these areas here, smoothing them down. But look at that, we've got our little flower coming in relief. And if we sand that all up and we can make wood carving marks all around here, we can put grasses in. Let's say I want a piece of grass coming up beside it here, just up here. I'll just do this. One line. I'm going against the green here, but it's going to be careful. But one light, as I come up to the end, I'm going to go much lighter. So I'm raising the tip of the blade up so I get a fine point off look. So first of all, we've got a mark that looks like a piece of grass anyway. But if I want that grass to be in relief, then I've got to do another one beside it here. So I start deep, and I go shallower and shallower and shallower. And this will be just the same for another leaf shape. Then I come in with my gouge around it. To leave the leaf standing in relief. You see how I'm going with the grain and leaving that piece at the end? That's now standing up proud. If I want, I can come back and carefully just bring it out again. And that's now standing as a piece of grass in relief. So let's see how you do now. First of all, starting with the V gouge, actually on the rest of the S there. So, right are you right-handed? Yeah. Right so you hold the chisel in your left yeah. hand, strangely enough, and you hold it with your hand on top. Hey. Already, yeah. You go across that way, can't I? So you're already you're getting the use of the angle of the of the gouge, aren't you? You're, yeah. you know, how it goes deeper and shallower. You should really on here have gone from there round to uh, there right. and then you go from the middle of that round right to, to there. there. But okay. A little bit like that won't really matter, you'll get away with that. 
That's the way, yeah. That's right, start off higher and then gradually go shallow as you go around. But you see what's happening as you come around, look, it's just it's starting to, slightly. so you've just got to come that way a bit more. But look at that lovely mark you've made there by going shallow and then coming in deeper, which is what you'll do here. Yeah. So how would I, would I just come back, back that just, way? Just, just come back this way, like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm going to go across. Well, here you side. see, what you need to do here is you're going to start off with a very small um, curl here, aren't you? So we'd start oh, off with, there. like that. I mean, see, I'm holding it now, I'm just yeah. not even holding it across, I'm just yeah. holding it just like that. Um, but you just start off very, very finely, and in one scroll you go in deeper and deeper and deeper, and you come right around the wood like that. So you see I've gone from yeah. thin to now getting thicker, so you carry on around that one. Great stuff, yeah. And there's your rest done, well done. So we could thicken out the lettering, I mean we could make it heavier by going deeper again yeah. there and deeper again yeah. here. Let's move across to the flower now. Find all the petals okay, first with the Vigo. It's completely making a deep line around every single one, yep. I'm going to go with the grain, so I'm going to go that way around, yeah? Yep. Absolutely, yeah, great stuff. I think she's got it! <laughs> Yeah, so just go the other way on that. So yeah, you can see now if you go yeah. against the grain how it's starting to split yeah. away. So you need to go that way in there. Right. So now it's the gouge, um, the deeper gouge, just to go around the edges. So you're going to go with this so this gouge gently into, but don't go so far that you split these petals off. So just go in about here, shallow, and gradually go down and pair into you just reach the edge. A bit further back. That's it. No, start a bit further back. A little bit further back. That's about there. There you go. But it slides along a bit, you see. You've got to go down to the depth of that cut. So you didn't go quite deep enough at the end, did you? Go right down to the depth of the V gouge cut you've done. Working out the principle that I can take it off when I can't put it back. That's right. You can actually glue bits back, so it, it is possible. Are you there? That's how it looks like. Doing it again. Right. And just, just tap in slightly yeah. around the petal and yeah. that way as well. Yeah. And then that will just lift it out too, or we can go in that way and lift it out. You know, this, this yeah. you can work towards yourself like that, yes. I'll right, we'll smooth the chisel just to level it off more. Other way up, that's it. So we're just smoothing out now. The smoothing out now, go around those petals you've just smoothed out, down to, just around the edges again, don't you? But be careful, so we're just going to get the depth and the delineation around the petals a bit more again. You're not cutting anything, you're, being too, you're, you're too worried, that's it. Be a bit bolder, we can always go a bit deeper there, that's better, that's better, be a bit bolder. Right to the end, that's it, perfect look. Now you do the other petals, that's perfect. Now you need to have your chisel slightly more that way okay. because you're going to be carving more there than there. Yeah. Here you carve there, you see. So turn the chisel to what you want. Or the gouge. That's it. Have you guys now to go around those petals that you've just done. I can go this way, can't I? Yep. that riffler a bit now just to start smoothing in and around. There. You can use both hands on that or one hand, yeah. One hand I often there. find it's one hand is good but you've got more control with okay. two to press down with that yeah. one and to push with that right. one so you've got more yeah. control like that to yeah. twist and turn and get into these little gaps. So just try that to get used to it. That's the way. And it, as it smooths out it gets easier to use as well because the rough bits at first obviously are catching on it. Okay, well, we've got to go for dinner now, so we're going to stop there for the moment and you finish that off tonight. We'll just show um, the viewers what you've done so far. So there we are, that's with the light over it, that's giving you an idea of how to carve in relief. So well done, Sarah. Have you learnt a good bit from that? Yeah, yeah. Just the, the So we can just finish that off and smooth it all up and tidy it up tonight, but just to give you an idea of how to use those tools, which I think for a first go is very good. Well done.